Today's episode of Vlog is brought to you by Feng Shui Wasabi Peas. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! Hey, Blue Peas, um, I have a story to tell you, and I, I promised uh, my friend, my sweet, uh, cute friend, Eden Bainbridge, that I would put a little disclaimer here. Um, let's roll a disclaimer. Alright, so anyway, I have a story to tell you, and yeah, uh, it's about a pit bull. It's these uh, creatures that live behind us, um, rednecks, white trash, whatever you want to call them. Anything is fair game Game as far as them goes. Um, as far as them goes, <laughs> I think my white trash is showing now. Um, these people have caused us all kinds of problems, um, but... They have this pit bull mix thing. They call it monster. Um, now this thing gets loose a lot, uh, and I've had to deal with it a few times. It's not typically a vicious dog or a mean dog. I've actually gotten hold of it and taken it back down there a few times, and I've asked them more than once to keep the, the thing tied up and not let it run around the neighborhood because we have little dogs, and you know. Even though it's 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 been nice to me, it's friendly with me. I don't really have a problem with it. Uh, it's been friendly with Julie. She doesn't have a problem with the dog itself. But our little dogs, you know, we don't know how it's going to act around them, or we didn't know until the other day when Monster was loose again and uh, came up into our yard. And Julie came home from uh, from work and she was on her way in. And Monster came up and was following her. And Julie opened the door and Simon ran outside. Which Simon does occasionally. Um, but usually he comes right back. This time, however... Uh, sorry. Monster got a hold of him. And uh, he didn't hurt him too bad. He just shook him up really bad. Uh, just scared him. <laughs> he was trembling for a really long time. But he... He tried to bite him. Um, Julie tried to get involved, and he tried to bite Julie. And uh, he bit her on the arm, but she was wearing this thick jacket at the time, so it didn't really leave any marks or anything. But uh, so we called 911 because animal control was closed at the time. This was pretty early in the morning, and uh, a cop came over and he was talking to us. And really, he's like, "There's not much I can do uh, other than shooting the dog." And I don't necessarily want the dog to be shot. I just want somebody. I just want it out of this neighborhood. And the reason why, and and I, I, I don't really have anything against pit bulls, but I have a problem with certain pit bull owners. And that's my problem is these people don't know how to take care of any dog really. I mean, this thing stands outside. All, I mean, right now I don't know if you can tell, but it's snowing. It's snowing pretty hard. He's out right now. Um, they leave him outside in all kinds of nasty weather. They don't give him any toys. I've never really seen any food back there by him. Um, so later on that day, we did talk to animal control. Julie talked to him quite a bit, actually, on the phone, and talking and talking and talking about this dog. And really, it may sound like we're, we're being hateful toward this dog, but it's not. We want... We want I would love for somebody to take this dog who knows what how to handle dogs, and I would take it, but we don't have room in this little house for a big dog like that, especially one that could potentially be attacking my little dogs again. And uh, I just, I wish that 
all animal c control can do at this point, or all they're doing at this point, is they just give these people a fine every so often. And that's all they're doing. And I really wish they would remove that dog and, and give it to somebody who can handle it, because these people just don't really know how to handle a dog. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't be loose all the time. It wouldn't be. It, it stands out here and barks for sometimes hours on end. And uh, animal control and the police uh, suggested from now on, whenever it's doing anything like that, uh, if it's barking obsessively, or if it, you see it loose, even if it's not attacking anybody or any animals or anything, uh, just keep reporting it. Get pictures of it. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to start uh, really making a case about this because. These people don't deserve to have a dog. Um, they don't know what they're doing. And, uh, I mean, I, th there's a kid down there. I think the dog actually belongs to him. He's a teenager. I put. I, I actually took a video of him once before. I don't know if you remember, but he's the kid who uh, was out beating on the tree with his skateboard and beating up a, his, on his bicycle. Um, and I just don't think he knows how to take care of it. Um, and he's the one that was like out at one or two in the morning one time, you know, walking through my yard yelling for his dog, and I asked him to, you know, go to bed, and he's like, well, you can't find my dog. I said, your dog shouldn't be running loose anyway. I mean, why is it, why is your dog always loose? So, uh, yeah, that's the whole story. I, I, I hope that, uh, we can get this resolved, because these people, you know, that dog needs to go somewhere with somebody who's going to actually take care of it, play with it, give it some attention, give it some toys, give it some food. I mean, I never see any food down there with it. Um, and that's really it. I'll talk to you bloopies later. They flaunt the grizzly photographs. They fill their ears with tail. I think it's only in a few. It doesn't. Tomato and olive oil triscuits. Mmm. Mmm. Spicy today. Need some water. <coughs> oh. Ooh. Oh. 